This is a Violet Jester Media Podcast. Let's do this shit. Okay. <clears throat> Hello once again. You are here at this epic disaster. With me. How are you? With me and me. And Two me. me's are here today. The me's. Yes, the measles. No. Both of us. Well, if people keep not vaccinating their children, we will be the measles. How the heck are you out there, people? Thanks for joining us on this epic disaster. Another Monday, uh, and I should bring this up. We will be a little bit late next week. We will be, just a touch. We will come out on Tuesday instead of Monday next week because I am going out of town and we'll be back late Sunday. And instead of recording another show before I go, we're going to go ahead and record it on Monday. That way it'll be more current fresh and more up to date. And smell good. Like me. Unlike most of our shows. <laughs> Very fresh. So keep that in mind next week if you're looking for a show on Monday. No, no. It'll be Wednesday. We'll release it out just for people who aren't caught up with the podcast yet. We won't be out on Monday. We will be out on Tuesday. Just pretend like I forgot to release the podcast. Like normal. Like normal. Okay. Well, how's it going over there? I am doing well. How are you? Good. Good. I'm glad to week? hear it. Um, it was long. And long week. Yeah, it was a long week. Well, you know what you need for a long week? A beer. You need a little bit of a beer. This is the point of the show where we do a live beer review. That sounded like a live beer right there. Today we are drinking Hoppy Kaye, and mm -hmm. it's by Lone Rider. Um, the artwork on the can is dangerously close to copyright infringement. <laughs> well, sort of. Sort of. Uh, but this is obviously an India Pale Ale. Well, uh, we should we should clarify. It's only because it, the dude on there looks a little bit like Bruce Willis. A little bit. Yeah. It's yeah. Arguably. So arguably. Not that close to copyright infringement, but it. They're they're dancing around it. They're 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 just touching on it. So, so this is uh, obviously an IPA. It's mm -hmm. a six point six percent alcohol by volume, mm -hmm. and I am not in the mood for hop. So we'll see how this goes. I rarely am in the mood for that, but uh, we have this now. I just feel like you know we we can't just do beers that we want to drink. We need to. Why not? It's, it's a our public, podcast. It's a public service. Sometimes we got to do beers. Maybe. We might not immediately think are going to be tasty because neither I don't think either of us are hop, hop people. Hoppy I used people. to really like beers Shiny, that are hoppy people, super hoppy. Uh huh. But uh, I've just gotten Ooh. away from it. I've gotten really into sours and Me away too. from the hop. Um, and I just I'm afraid. It's got that kind of uh, bitter grapefruit smell. Okay. You know it's gonna you know, you know it's gonna be that if way. It's, if it's citrusy, like super citrusy, mm -hmm. I'll be okay with it. Let's just stop talking about it and taste it. What did the description say of, of, as far as like taste, or does it say? Well, what, what can we expect from this beer? It oh here it is. Okay, it says uh, just a fly in the ointment, the monkey in the wrench, the pain in the ass. We know what that's from. Oh. Uh, Hoppy Kaye includes some great malts and hops. This straw-colored IPA hopped with Idaho blah, blah, blah um, showcases hops in the best way possible from start to finish. So we'll that's all, it, they're just you telling just us guess. it's going to be hoppy. I'm going to have a sip here. Okay, I'd like you to try it first so I can look at your face and judge your reaction. Ooh. Oh, boy. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it is pretty. It's very pretty. Yeah. It looks like a, kind of a cloudy... Um, they said straw colors, and I think that's fairly accurate. That's fair, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what's your first impression while I take my drink? <laughs> Get ready. Oh, dear God. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> it's been a while since we've had one of these. Now we uh, we remember why, huh? Oof. Duh. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So we're going to be uh, slowly drinking this one throughout the show. Very slowly. And yeah. we may not finish it, but we will tell you what we think of it after we drink it and I, at the end of the show. You know what's what is coming up? What's coming up? Well, okay. We're recording this end of August. Correct. Very end of August. Not very end of August. It's close. Close. Okay. We're getting there. It's almost. It's like the twentieth. But okay. Yeah, but All it right. comes out next week, and then it's it's we're getting at the end of August. Okay. We're we're getting really really close to Halloween. Oh yeah. Halloween. Yep. Um, one of our favorite times of the year. One of my favorite, absolute favorite times of the year. We need to do something Halloweeny on the show. We need a Halloween show. I'm trying to think of a theme. I'm trying to think of what we can do fun for Halloween on the show. On the show. I have an idea. What is your idea? I'm just going to throw it out. This is, again, it's just an idea. Maybe people will have better ideas if they want us to do something. But So here's what I was thinking. I don't even know how to arrange this. Right now it's just a thought. It's just a thought cloud. A thought bubble. A thought bubble, a if you will. A little light bulb above my head. Okay. I'm thinking, what if we found a local, real haunted house? Not like, you know... Um, um, entertainment uh-huh. type of haunted. I mean, like a real house, right? That is supposed to be haunted. Okay. So, what if we found that, and we stayed in it overnight, and did a broadcast? So, what we'd have to do is we'd like have a to, live one. We would have yes. Okay. We, we would have to figure out because there wouldn't be any electricity. I'm positive. So we'd have to figure out how to do that. Mm-hmm. Maybe through our phone. We'd make sure our phones are charged. Mm-hmm. Maybe take a little bit of extra charge with us. I have that. And so the quality might not be great, but we would we would stay in the haunted house overnight. Like now, the problems I can see immediately are where are we going to get a haunted house? Right. And where are we going to get a haunted house at that time of year? Yeah. It would have to be something that was somewhat safe. In other words, I mean, I certainly don't expect, you know, it to be inspected and security guards, and but you don't want to stay in something that there's a chance that you might get you know, eaten by snakes or something like that. How about no? Thank you. <laughs> but an empty house that maybe has a reputation for being haunted. Okay. That we could get permission. I think you got to get permission. I don't know. To stay in a haunted house. Anyway, we can work out the details. But that's just one idea that I had. Wouldn't that kind of be fun? That would be fun. Yes, that would be fun. Um and we just stay there overnight and um, broadcast throughout the night. It, I'm not saying we couldn't do a, a full a live broadcast all night, but we would break in every once in a while. You know, like once on an hour. Sure. We would do a five minute, hello, here we are, we're still alive. We're still alive. And maybe talk about things that we've seen. And maybe we could actually record, because I could get a record thing. We can do some vocal recording that we could actually put. And make a podcast. So out of we it. could do a podcast, and we could check in on like Facebook Live or yeah. YouTube or something every hour. That's sort of one idea that I have at this point. I like it. Let's let's work on that offline. Let's take that offline. Okay. <clears throat> now I feel like I'm at work. Um. So speaking of Halloween, yeah. I uh, wanted to let you know that the idea of staying in a haunted house is really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I had an incident happen to me. The other night, where it was, uh, it had to have been Sunday night. I hate Sunday nights. I just my what? anxiety level goes up. Oh, because you're getting, you're kind of anticipating the next day. Yeah, the, going to work. The work week. Yeah. Oh wow. So um, I had been around some spray paint, uh, a lot of it, and I think this may have been part of what happened. But I had the worst night possible. Oh. I didn't hardly sleep at all. Uh, I was on edge all night long. I just was convinced someone was in the house. I was one of those paranoid kind of evenings. Mm-hmm. Um, did you hear a train sound at any point? During like the night? that? Yeah, did that happen? <laughs> was it like, like Freddy Krueger on a train, like a dream train coming through? And That's a big train. Anyways. A, sometimes they're really loud. Yeah. That one's loud. Hey, uh, quickly, you know, there's no thunderstorm today. I'm wondering if the spells worked last week. It's coming. I know. It's there on the way. There is a thunderstorm <laughs> on the way. But we did dodge it. And what's weird is we're recording Saturday, which we never do. Ever. Saturday morning, ever. We just never do. Right. We had to do it because uh, our normal time I'll be gone. And and the thunderstorm is on the way. But we might. 
have avoided it. Although we did get a big ass train. A big ass train. Yeah. That's my favorite rock band, by the way. Big ass train. I like them too. Okay. <clears throat> so anyways, this got me thinking about like what is an actual phobia? What does a phobia Sorry, go mean? ahead. <laughs> Stop making those weird faces at me. I didn't. I didn't know what you I don't know what that was. Hey, you know um we didn't do this too. But phobias, uh huh. When you were going through your little freak out, yeah, I was having a little freak out, and I thought, is this, is this like paranoia? Is this just me being psyched up? Is mm -hmm. this a phobia? What is happening here? So let me see if I get this straight. What's happened? So you uh, came? Did you come home from? No, it was Sunday. So what did you do Sunday? What was going on Sunday? Well, let me tell you. Okay, Saturday, it starts Saturday, because Saturday I was helping my friend make Halloween decorations. Okay. And I was spray painting. You it. were huffing, basically? Yes. Mm -hmm. Legal huffing? Yes. Or uh, unintentional huffing? Unintentional legal huffing. Okay. Uh, and then there was uh, Sunday, which my landlords were in our garages, which I live above the garage. Right. And they were doing spray painting in the garages. So double dose. Double of dose of spray paint. Bring stuff right mm -hmm. and uh yeah so and i really didn't do much that day i just kind of chilled out around the house so i was there with this paint in the garage all day mm -hmm. uh and then that night and i was i was feeling shaky i was a little bit hungover so i was feeling shaky already and uh yeah, I think it just affected me my brain i it was you know what it felt like it felt like an adrenaline dump like a huge adrenaline dump like my skin was i've had those was on fire. Yes, and and my heart was pounding, and it. But it, it did that all night long. Was this uh, somehow associated with the diet you're on? No. Do you feel like I do not because I've not been really strict. With okay. That. Okay. So I don't feel so that it's not like change of food, lack of diet, anything like that. No. No. Okay. No. Um, but this got me thinking about something else. Uh, the next day, I was thinking, what was I actually afraid of last night? You know, what? where was the fear? Mm -hmm. And there really was no fear. I Again, with the adrenaline dump, I think that my brain was just trying to keep up, you know, because what is happening to your body and why are you feeling this way and what can I make sense of? Okay. Um, but I remembered a, a, a thing that I had seen online. I was just flipping through uh, MSN, whatever. And... Uh, I <laughs> what? You're being a weirdo. No, I was flipping through online. I'm sorry. Okay. He was just uh, flipping the bird to his computer, uh, flipping online. I was just flipping through. <clears throat> I'm trying to understand you by going through your emotions is what I, basically. I'm trying to get compassion. Are empathy. you acting out my words? Yes, I'm trying to be empathetic. I want to be where you were. Maybe I can relate. That's okay. what I'm trying to do. So I discovered I do have a phobia that I didn't actually realize I had. Really? And I don't think I had as a child. Oh. And I have no reason to have it. And I'm going to tell you what it is after I ask you a few questions. Uh, afraid of podcast hosts? Uh, that is, you know, quickly becoming one of them. Wow. Um, I have a couple of questions here, and I'm going to give you an idea of what these questions are like. Okay. okay. This is going to be like a little quiz. It's going to sure. be fun. Okay. I'm up for a quiz. So this is kind of an idea of what the questions are like. So mm -hmm. is the fear of spiders yeah. called arachnophobia mm -hmm. or eight-leg phobia? Mm -hmm. Do I, am I supposed to guess this? Please. Well, it's arachnophobia. Okay. So sure. that's kind of what the questions are going to be like. Okay. Now, um, this one is uh, autophobia. Autophobia? Yes. Okay. Is that the fear of being alone or fear of cars? Uh, I'm going to say fear of being alone. You are correct. Yeah. All right. Next one. Glossophobia. Glossophobia is a fear of language. No, it is not. Speaking. Fear of tongues. <laughs> fear of being tongued. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to guess. You were, you were right on the second guess. It's uh, actually a fear of speaking in public. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, now this one, I want you. I want you to guess which of these three okay. phobias is the fear of the dark. Fear of the dark. Mm -hmm. I used to know this. Is it nyctophobia, mm -hmm. necrophobia, mm -hmm. or noctophobia? Oh, how do you spell the last one? N o c t i phobia. Oh. And the first one is spelled N a c h. Nope. N y c t o phobia. Oh. I get a. I'm going to go with the last one, C. You would be correct, sir. It's nocturnal. Yes. At night. Yes. But I was. I thought maybe the first one, I thought maybe that they were trying to trick us. Like, But wouldn't that make you think you were just afraid of nighttime? 
Uh, Well, maybe, yeah. But it's actually fear of the dark. Sure. So even just being in a closet in the day, you're afraid. Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, you'll never guess what the meaning of this one. Okay. Phobophobias. Phobophobias? Phobophobia. Phobo. What's a phobo? Phobo? (laughs) Fear of a better offer? No, that's a commercial. Okay. Phobophobia. Phobophobia. Because I know what they're going to want. They're wanting you to say fear of fear or fear of being afraid of things. You're very close. It's actually a fear of phobias. Yeah. Which that doesn't even make sense. It doesn't make any sense who at did, all. Who thought of that? It makes zero sense. Did you fire that person? Yes. Okay. So I have another one. Two more. Okay. This next one. What I want you to do is I want you to define mm-hmm. verminophobia. Verminophobia? Yes. Um... Fear of small animals. That's what I would think too. Fear but apparently, that is actually the defi- the definition of that is fear of germs. Mm, that's very small. <laughs> <laughs> They're really small. They're really small. Little vermin. Well, maybe that's where it comes from. You vermin. It does. I remember reading that fairly recently. Okay. Wow. Yeah. We're learning I did. things. Remember this that. is an educational podcast. Well, for we try. Listening. We try. If we can't come up with actual scientific facts, we'll make shit up. <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just throw things out i like it and last but not least actually i'm lying this is the second to last okay okay uh ambulophobia fear of walking very good do you do you have a fear of walking i do not i love walking okay fear okay. of the walking dead Ah, uh, that's a show fear Arr. of the walking dead mm-hmm. so this one is more of just a fact okay this one kind of cracks me up okay uh anthro Phobia. The fear of human beings. No, that's anthropophobia. Okay. Anthropophobia. Anthropophobia. Um, it sounds very similar, so you would think that it is actually very closely related. The f- a fear of your aunt throwing things at you. That's probably it. I had that it, when I was a kid. I, I do too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, this is My fear- uncle has it <laughs> really bad. Fear. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. We should not do these on Saturday morning. (laughs) Fear of flowers. Flowers? Anthropophobia. Anthropology? No, anthropophobia. I know I'm trying to figure out what the root word is, though. Anthro, I I don't know. I don't know either. I had Latin, but I don't don't understand that one. It's kind of... Anyways, it's a little strange, but that's that's a little quiz. You did very well. I scored high. You scored very high. Whenever you give me quizzes, mm-hmm. I suck. No, you do. It depends on the quiz, but I think I pick really hard. Well, no, that's not fair because this is a hard quiz. I didn't really think I would get them. This is actually a really hard quiz, and yeah. you did great. Um, but let me tell you, mm-hmm. let's go in now to the story of the phobia that Sherry has discovered. Oh, uh, can we guess it? Do we guess it, or do we would, would we never guess it? You would never guess it. Okay. But you can if, if you want to. Well, I mean, I would need clues. I couldn't just throw out. I, I would be here all day if I'm guessing. Okay. So. Okay, you're afraid of your closet. <laughs> um, you're afraid of newspapers. You're afraid of bunnies. Um, <laughs> no. I don't know. So it's actually two phobias in one. Combined. Yes. It's uh, multiphobia. 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 It is, and I'm not going to say this right. Okay. okay. Uh, I think it's th- thalassophobia. Thalass? Is it T-H- thalassophobia? T H A L A S S O. Thalasso. Okay. Okay. Thalassophobia mixed with megalophobia. Megalophobia is. Okay. So megalomania. What is megalomania? That's thinking you're the. So fear of yourself. No. Fear of? Large things. Large things. Yes. Fear of very large things. Megalophobia. That's why you broke up with me. (laughs) Uh Nope. And thalassophobia is fear of or fear of the sea or fear of some kind of open water, big, deep, dark, open water. I have dark, that. Open water. That's mine, okay. Yeah. So you're afraid of gigantic oceans. I'm afraid of gigantic things in the ocean. Oh, wow. Okay. So so giant squids. Uh, <laughs> you found out things this in like your this. bedroom. I will tell you're you. laying around. No, I will tell you. I, like I said, I was flipping through online, and I mm. found a link to some really cool images. And I thought, well, I'm going to flip through these images. And they were all of really large, open, 
uh, underwater scenes uh, in the dark where there's abysses and sure. crevices. And so, like, uh, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, you drop down miles, however far down it goes, right. into the complete darkness right. where there's a world that we don't really even know. Right. And creatures some maybe we've never even seen before. Correct. You would not do that. You wouldn't go there. It would scare the crap out of you. It, I, I, would, I couldn't. Uh -huh. I couldn't. I couldn't. There's no way. I mean, just looking at the pictures, mm -hmm. my anxiety level comes up. Let's say that you're on a, you're in one of those little solo submarines. So you're 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 doing a little scientific thing, having a lot of fun, mm -hmm. putting around in the little solo submarine, just kind of seeing, you know, the ocean, having fun, and then all of a sudden, no, no, stop! You're then making the me freak out. Then the engines go off, and then what's happening? Stop. Uh, we're sinking. Stop! You're, um, uh, Miss Brown, you're sinking. We will get you out. We promise. But we've got the technical difficulty. We're going to have to see if what we can do. Um, uh, just hang tight. We'll be right there. We'll rescue you. We promise. And then you're you're sinking down, and you and light. You could see light gradually diminishing. I hate you. And. <laughs> I hate you so much right now. <laughs> and then and then for minutes, for hours, it gets gradually darker and darker and darker. And then your little mini uh, submarine implodes on me you hit from the, the pressure. You hit the ocean floor and you're there. It's pitch black. You can't see anything. I mean, black. you could touch the black. It's so black. Okay, black. stop. What? Or why? I, so, okay. So I'm wondering, first of all, if your eyes... Well, they don't. I was going to say, would they adjust? Because you got to have some sort of light there to see anything. There is zero light And down most there. of those creatures down there are blind yeah. because they never have to have any light. And so you're there. But, and then, okay, let's say. I know what you're going to say next, and I don't want you to say it. Please don't say it. No, let's say that uh, the, the electricity in your little submarine still works. Somehow. So, so the exterior lights. Come on, and you could see the world under there, and you could see everything in your little in your little submarine, and you just sit there waiting, and you could just see creatures and things. So you would be flipped out. What would you do? How would you survive? Would you just panic? Would you completely panic? I would completely panic. You know? I would I would completely lose my shit. I would I would I would not be able to gather my shit together. I would lose it. Um, and then I, they come on their loudspeaker, like, Miss Brown. Uh, we figured out what the problem is. Unfortunately, it's going to be tomorrow before we can get you up. We think we, you have enough oxygen. There's food and water there on board. Uh, just hang tight for 24 hours. We will get you out of there. And see, you know where my brain goes? This is where my brain goes. Is I, Okay, even if I was perfectly cozy and comfy in my happy little submarine and yes. I had all my, my bare necessities, um, all of a sudden my brain says, and then all of a sudden something very large comes and hits the outside of the submarine from behind, and I have no idea what it is. Ah! Yeah, that right there, fuck you. What if there's, and we don't even know it, but there's a creature that's big enough that, like, your submarine is like a mint. Mm hmm. And just pop it in their mouth. Mm hmm. Boink. And then you're in, then you got to go through the whole canal. It's like, you know, you're, you're not going to be digested, but you'll be inside this creature for a while. See, now that, that would be get, fun. And then you get pooped out after a while. I would like that. And you're still intact. Because I'm inside something and yeah. I can see what's happening and I can just see all the scientific like... Cradled inside of a creature. Yeah, I'm fine there. Hmm. I'm perfectly fine there. It's the large open spaces with these big things in mm -hmm. there that I don't know that scares me. Just looking at a photo... Okay, I want every, everybody listening to do this. Next time you're in front of a computer, look up a photo of say a diver underwater next to like the propeller of a really big submarine or okay. something that right there will make me cry that is just that frightens me so much okay. it's this huge object sure and this little tiny person so uh, i'm going to psychoanalyze you now okay i would say that um this it means the ocean is your unexplored potential your in inner person who you are, the vast inner person of you, the bigness that you're afraid of is you are afraid of the unknown of yourself. You're afraid of your unknown potential. You're afraid of what might be inside of you. You're afraid of the big creature that exists inside of you that might pop out. That's mm. what you're afraid of. You're afraid of you. You're afraid of yourself. <laughs> 
isn't that where you always end up when you psychoanalyze people? Most of the time. Okay. Because I think you've done this to me before yes. with my dreams, yes. and you always tell me I'm afraid of myself. That's how it always goes. I can't help it. I mean, that's just you. <laughs> Not everybody has that problem. But. There is a phobia for that. What? Being afraid of yourself? Being afraid of yourself. Uh, Sherophobia? I think it's autophobia. Oh. <laughs> that's a fear of cars. Oh. <laughs> we anyways. Were, we just went away. <laughs> So anyways, thank you for listening to my happy little story. I, I don't see a line between that and being afraid of, like, in your dreams, large things in your dreams. Like, my wife has dreams on a regular basis of houses and, and rooms in the houses that she's afraid of. And I think it's the basic thing. It's, I know what that is. Yeah. yeah. It's the same idea, unexplored yep. parts of your yourself and exactly. your mind. And, your, and, and in a way, we all kind of have that. Most dream analyzers will tell you that... Anytime you dream of a building, yes, that that's you. It is, and and every room in there is an aspect of you. And it's the same with the ocean, though. It is. It's. I mean, it's all you. It's the unexplored part of you. This vastness of yourself. They also say that all the people in your dream mm -hmm. are aspects of you. Really? Mm -hmm. All the people in my dream have big boobs. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how that but has anything to do with me. Well, I can be. <laughs> <laughs> I try hard. Um, that's very interesting. Well, um, keep us updated. I don't know how. What do you do with that? You don't. You don't live next to the ocean. You don't go diving. You're not an ocean person necessarily. You Here's can't go thing. to the ocean. When I was a little girl, uh, we used to live on the coast of California. Yes. And my mother and I, uh, when we still got along. Um, would as soon as we got to the ocean, we would drop our belongings on the beach and just run and go as far out as we possibly could and just swim all the way out past the breakers. Wait a second. How large was your mother? <laughs> That's a whole different part of the psychoanalysis I forgot to go into. So you think I'm afraid of my mother. It could be. It could very well That's be. That's what Freud would say. <clears throat> That's true. I'm um, not a Freudian analysis. So th so this fear of open water has just it's 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 not been there my whole life. Sure. And I've I've only mm. had one instance where I almost drowned. Yeah. Only one. And I'm I I'm a water baby. I love the water. I, I it's not about water. It's the about it's I'm telling you, I told you what it is. You are in a job right now. Where you have potential of being promoted, you have potential of, of being in charge of people, you're getting into areas in your job that you haven't been in and you haven't had to encounter for a long, long time, if ever, and they mostly involve parts of yourself that you're going to have to really bring to the surface that maybe you're not comfortable with. And that's what it's about. It's about you being afraid of parts of yourself that you're encountering right now. Okay. And and it, I, I will take that with me, and I will. I will. And they all look like giant underwater creatures. Absorb That's, that. <laughs> I'm, I don't doubt I have giant underwater creatures inside me. Um, <laughs> I won't even go there. <laughs> hey, let's play some Zabmundo. All right, we forgot to do that. Well, we didn't forget to. We just decided to move it to the middle of the show. Here's something I found out interesting about Zabmundo. What's that? We do Zabmundo every show now. We do. We like this game. It's fun. It's called Zabmundo. The crazy would you rather game mm -hmm. well what i found out is zabmondo is actually the company that makes it the game now is called would you rather right like by zabmondo so it's like if someone's if you're going to play um monopoly and you're like hey let's play some milton bradley that's kind of <laughs> like what it is when we say zabmondo but i think they've sort of rebranded it because this version Zabmondo is the big name, and they're, it's almost like they're calling it Zabmondo. But you know what? We don't play it according to the no. official rules. So we can call so it whatever we, can call we want. It whatever the hell we That's want. That's right. But I but I just noticed some of the newer versions of the game. Zabmondo is much smaller, and the game is now. Would you rather? I mean, that's basically what it is. Am it's I a going would you first? Rather. I'm no. You're going to read first. So I'm going to. Yeah. So I'm I'm going first. No, you're going to read first. I'm reading for you, like we did last week. Okay. Okay. You ready? Sure. All right. I'm going to drop a stone. Drop a stone. I got a yellow stone. Yeller. What's the yellow question again? You oh, got your yellow that's one. That's random. Um, this one is urine. No, <laughs> wait a minute. It is random. All right. Would you rather fish with your <laughs> It's about fish. <laughs> Would you rather fish with your hands in a large pond oh God. <laughs> until you catch something, Are I you swear, kidding? or untangle a golf ball sized knot of thread? Seriously, that's the question? That's the question. 
Um, I would rather fish in a large pond. Until you catch something. Until I catch something. I think it would go quicker. I, I hate untangling things. Like, I, I despise it. I'm kind of good at that. I used to, Anytime uh, my mother would get a knot in her necklace when I was a kid, she would always give it to me. And I'd get it out like that, just quickly. I don't understand that. I have that. a talent to do that. You have, you have um, uh, agile hands? Mm, no. Maybe. Very tactile hands? When it comes to chains, I can get out of chains. All right. Oh, All right. Oh, man, I'm feeling blue so strong. Why am I feeling blue so strong? I don't know. You're not going to get it. Look at <gasps> that. I just, Look at that. It was, just, it was too psychic. I just felt it. I knew it. It's, it's, all, it's, all that, it's all that analyzing you've been doing. Well, sometimes I, sometimes the psychic ability in me is like right there at the surface, and sometimes I fake it. And, and when I fake it, I always miss it. But that one was strong. And I when you it. fake it, uh, you actually – then you claim that you felt it. Yeah. Okay. It always happens. So that. appliance – Appliance? Appliances. No. I take refrigerator <laughs> for $100. $100? Appearance embarrassment is where we're going. Wow, we, we rarely drop a blue. Do you know that? Yeah. Because we rarely get this question. So appearance and em- embarrassment? Yes. Okay. Um, this is kind of an interesting question, and I'm curious to know what you think about it. Okay. Would you rather look like you're 60 when you're 20 or look like you're 10? When you're 40. Um, wow. I feel like I had this question before, but I believe I would rather look like I'm 10 when I'm 40. Really? Yeah. So you'd rather be 40 years old and not be taken seriously because you look like a 10-year-old? Yes. Because I think there are women who have fetishes for that, so I'd still get laid. Oh, God. Um, and it would be legal. And it would be legal. And nobody takes you seriously anyways. Yeah. And so the other way, I, I really couldn't cash in on it. There's nothing I could do about it. If you look like you're 60 when you're actually 20, yeah. you could cash in yeah, on that. Yeah, maybe if I'm 20, barely. Because if you're 20, you can go out and you have all the stamina and all the agility and all that, but you just look 60. Yeah. So everybody will go, look at that old guy. Look at what he can do. I've got a couple of friends who looked like they were middle-aged when they were in their 20s. And now that they're in their middle age, they look exactly like they did. So they never aged. That that's, that's nice. That's interesting. It's just like their age caught up to who they were. They were always that same person. That's I think funny. they'll always be like that too. Okay, so that's Zabmondo. That Thanks was fun. Playing along. Those are some good questions. Those were good questions. Okay, I got a question. This is really kind of spooky. Spooky. I like um, spooky. Um, um, have you ever seen someone that looked exactly like someone that you knew, and it wasn't them? Yes. And, and it just freaked you out. And I don't mean like at a distance or on TV. I mean like in person when you just like, what? Like that's not really who that is? Yeah. 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 I That happened to me this week. Really? So I, I'm in a store, mm-hmm. buying something in a store, and I see this girl, and um, she's kind of at a distance. She's like, hey, can I help you? And I'm like, no, I'm just looking. She's like, all right. So I get what I need. I go up. She comes up to, to ring up my merchandise or whatever Mm -hmm. and i realized when she's standing there she now i have a friend who's an actress slash model Mm -hmm. in her early 30s this woman was in i hate to to do this because i don't know but i would say late 30s to early 40s okay maybe Mm -hmm. she now she didn't look exactly like my friend but she looked like she would be my friend's sister Okay. She had the exact same facial features, nose, uh, teeth, eyes. She had the same hair, body, everything. She just looked like they could be related. She was just older. Uh-huh. She looked like maybe she'd had a couple kids. My, my friend hasn't had any kids. And, and so she was like, and I don't, I don't want to use the word, but I'm going to rougher. She was just kind of like life had gotten her a little bit more than my friend. Okay. So she's a little worn maybe. Could be age or something. Just raising kids or whatever. But she's still attractive. But it's just like it, they, they, you could tell it wasn't the same person. But they just looked. I mean, it was scary. I couldn't stop staring at her. And that was scary for her. I kind of felt like she would <laughs> really start being uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. But I kept, it was, you know, I was looking at her way, trying to, really I was trying to find something that was different. I was looking for flaws that didn't look like my friend, and I couldn't find it. So you were examining this woman's face. I was trying not to be obvious about it, but I was <laughs> looking, and like she, when she would smile, she had like a little gap in her teeth, and my friend doesn't have that, but it was really small. But when she would turn sideways and you couldn't see that, her teeth looked the same. Everything about her was the same. 
and it just flipped me out. Okay. It was so okay. weird. So, so I mean, when you think about how many people there are in the world, um, eventually, you know, two people are going to look very, very similar because there are only so many options. Right. Do you know? I was at a, a, a craft fair a few months ago, and there was a girl there that I could not tell the difference in this girl and a friend's daughter, okay. who I know really well. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to go into detail, but I know her really well. So it's not like somebody that would just like, oh, maybe I know this person. I mean, I, 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 I couldn't tell it was not that person. Really? Even when I was close and looked at her. She had the, the same face, the same features, everything. She was that person. That it is... was so creepy. It scared me because I was just like, oh, should I go up and say hi? And then I was like, no, what? that can't be because this person lives in another state. It it was just really weird. Okay. But it was the same person. But you, I could have you, you were positive. I wanted to take a picture and go, look, see this person? This is <laughs> you, not you. This is not you. <laughs> now, do you think that you have... One of those people. I've had there? people tell me a lot that I look like uh, certain movie stars or, or celebrities or wrestlers or country music stars or whatever. So I've had a lot of people, and at times in my life, I think I've probably looked a little bit like them. Right. But I don't know. I, occasionally, somebody would say, "Oh, I've got a friend who looks just like you," or something. But I've never, I've never actually seen the people. Right. And I get that too. What's funny is. It, it, People always try and say, you look like so-and-so, and it's always somebody in the news or famous or, or somebody that you would know. Right. Um, like, when I was younger, people used to say I looked like Ashley Judd. Okay. Um, and I could see it a little bit when I was thinner and younger. Um, but you as a younger person and she as a younger person probably looked uh, a lot alike. Correct. Yeah. But I've had other people, again, say... Oh my God! I could have swore you were so and so, you know. And and what's funny is the last person that told me that said, and her name was Sherry too. Oh, weird. But totally different state that I'd never even been to, so it wasn't me. Um, so I just it's just odd that there are people out there that look exactly like you and that are doing things like could do things and as you. Isn't that frightening? Yeah, and I always think it's weird when people tell you that you look like someone who. You know you look nothing like. Oh, I hate like that. Like, I, I think I had an aunt that told me that I reminded him of Christopher Reeve. No. Superman. I look nothing like Christopher Reeve. I don't act like I never was built like him. And I was like, what are you clicking into? Where is this Christopher Reeve vibe coming I from? I don't know. I don't see it. I've had um, people tell me I look like, well, when my hair was shorter and I didn't have a, maybe I had a really short beard or something, I used to get Jeff Goldblum a lot. Really? Um, I've gotten Dennis Quaid. <laughs> now, since my hair is longer and I have the beard, everybody says uh, Jeff Bridges from uh, The Dude, mm-hmm. what you might call it. Mm-hmm. But that's just hair and beard. I don't think I, I look like him. Yeah, um, no. And a couple of country music stars I get a lot. Yeah, yeah. Huh. I haven't recently, though. I haven't, I haven't been compared recently. What do you think it would feel like to like look exactly like someone? I don't know. I think you can make a career out of it if, it, if it's somebody famous, especially like a politician or something, because people do. Yeah. But I, I would think that that kind of gets old, maybe. After a while. But, I, but here's what I find interesting is um, this is a little more random, uh, not quite as startling, but when you have a doppelganger. What's a doppelganger? Because the doppelganger is like your double. Okay. A doppelganger is uh, someone who has the same name as you. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep, yep. Wouldn't that be kind of weird? It, it is weird. Um, I've had that happen at my pharmacy. Yeah. Which sucks. Yeah. <laughs> because you got to be really careful. Yeah. I mean, same middle initial and everything. Oh, wow. Spelled the same way. So I'm. Uh, you, we had a, a, a an episode a couple weeks ago where I was trying to think of a new job for me. And mm-hmm. I thought maybe, maybe I might want to go to, into real estate or something. Right. So the other day I'm driving down the street here in Atlanta. I'm driving... Uh-huh. And I look up, and there's a sign in front of a house that said Rick Baldwin Homes. Really? Call Rick Baldwin at Rick. I'm like, what? That's me. That's me. I didn't know anything about this person. <laughs> I was like, why is he using my name? <laughs> I said I wanted to get into real estate, and he went ahead and, and jumped ahead and did it. suddenly he did it with your name. Yeah. So um, I, I went and I looked up. You could look it up. Rick Baldwin Homes. 
there's this guy in Atlanta here with my name. In Atlanta with your name out in the public. With my potential job. Putting your name out there with your job. That's not cool. That's my doppelganger. There's a, um, when I was in, I used to live in Knoxville. There's a guy, I think a pastor Mm -hmm. in Knoxville with my name. Mm -hmm. They're all over. Uh, not as many as some people, but occasionally, but that just makes it more fun when you see someone. So anyway, I sent this guy um, a, a, an email and asked him if he wanted to be on the show. Did you really? We can do two Rick Baldwin shows. Um, he hasn't gotten back to me. Hopefully he will. But that would, that would be, be awesome. fun. That would be fun. Just to find out what it's like from his standpoint living with that name. I know what it's <laughs> like in mine. Uh, but that's my doppelganger. Well, you have several doppelgangers. A few. Yeah. There is a, uh, uh, or was a famous baseball player. Yes. Named Rick Baldwin. And I think a race car driver, <clears throat> if Possibly. I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. And then uh, there, I've seen various computer people. But have you ever Googled, not Googled, but even Facebook your name to see who has that? I have. I have. Not a lot of them on Facebook. Mm-hmm. But if you do Google uh, my name, there's an artist, there's sure. a kindergarten teacher. Yeah. There's, you know, all these people, and it's spelled the same way. My mother has a very unique name, and someone from Facebook with her exact name contacted her, and they became Facebook friends. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> it I've just seen goes that to show you. Before. It just goes to show you. No matter what your name is, there's probably someone with the same name out there. And again, because there's only so many options. You're doppelganger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you have a story about a doppelganger or a doppelganger. Please send it to uh, this epic disaster at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And if it's a doppelganger, send pictures if you can. Please do. That'd be fun. Hey, guess what I got? Oh, God. What? What do you got? Two months to live. Oh, that's fine. I thought you were going to say misconnections. Oh, I do. I have some misconnections. Oh, God. Okay. We haven't done misconnections on the show in a long time. I have some misconnections here. Um, which I thought were kind of good. Now, these are a theme. I think it's we should do a... Th- I'm going to do a theme for every set of misconnections. Oh, okay. This Today's theme is called There's No Chance in Hell. There's No Chance in Hell. That's today's theme. Brought to you by This Epic Disaster. That's today's theme for misconnections. So what that means is, uh, of these misconnections, there's just no way in hell they're going to get the people back okay. that they want. Okay, okay. All right. For whatever reason, various reasons. For the okay, so the first one from Winston Salem, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Uh, headline: Female on Patterson Avenue. I would like to talk to the female that was walking on Patterson Avenue around six o'clock this morning. That's it. That's it. That's all it says. <laughs> no way in hell <laughs> this person is going to get that. No. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Um. In Mechanicsville, Virginia, at the Target store, I'm a male, you're a female. We made eye contact, and wow, I wanted to say how amazing you looked. You are probably attached, but if you ever want to grab some coffee, let me know. I doubt you'll ever see this. I was wearing a red shirt and brown pants. But it doesn't say what she was wearing. Uh, or anything about her. Or anything her, about or her or him. Where necessarily the target is or what time of day. or any, It's just a woman who made eye contact with a guy with a red shirt. <laughs> no way no in way hell. No way in hell. No way in hell. They're getting together. In Philadelphia at Spring City, Sonoco. Sonoco. Son- Sonoco. 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 So- so- yeah. You were standing in front of me in line and turned around and smiled. I wish I could have started a conversation. Hope you see this. Uh, no way in hell. <laughs> I mean, n- at least narrow it down, people. What line? Did you do that. What, what conversation? What did we talk about? What did I look like? <laughs> now this one is interesting because this one's narrowed down to the woman on crutches hobbling on the boardwalk in a <laughs> cast at the Jersey Shore. <laughs> That's I mean, pretty specific. It is. <laughs> I saw you crutching along on the boardwalk. Your leg was in a cast and you had aluminum crutches. I was with some coworkers and couldn't get a chance to come over and chat. But on the oddball chance you see this, I would love to meet you. Maybe we could grab dinner if you want to hang out. Um, so she doesn't know who this person is. She never saw, talked, whatever. She's on the boardwalk with friends and some random person see there how desperate would you have to be to be, oh, yeah, I want to meet some stranger. That just happened to see me. Just go on the boardwalk and throw a rock at someone, and that <laughs> could be, that could be the person who wants to meet you. No way in no hell. No way in hell you're getting 
the cast girl, the crutch girl. Not happening. Not happening. All right. This is the last one. Thank God. It may be my favorite. Okay. Asian girl smoking on the Upper West Side, New York. We chatted on Broadway, and I mentioned that smoking was bad for you, and you said, that's why you like it. I'm white, older, and I mentioned I like how you looked while you smoked, and you took a drag and said to tell you more. I'm looking for her, or a facsimile. Or a facsimile? <laughs> If what? I could get this girl, I would love to have it. But if you're close, I'll take you. I'll take you. <laughs> what in hell? What the fuck? No way that's happening. No way in hell. <laughs> no way in hell. All right. So that's. Um, so basically, he should just put a personals ad out that says, I want a younger Asian girl Asian. who smokes. Yeah. And has attitude. But I mean, it started out kind of romantic you know a little flirty play hey you like i liked your smoking you were cute we had a little banter it was fun i'd really like to meet you or somebody kind of like you right a facsimile will do <laughs> will i don't do. care it doesn't have to be you i mean maybe you had a cigar it's not it's not about you as a person it's about my needs yeah that's, and that's it doesn't all it have is. to be asian we'll go with mexican sure. maybe german why not i don't care not important just someone who doesn't look like me <laughs> and younger <laughs> You have so, to be younger. There you go, misconnection. Sometimes you understand why they're missed. It's just, and sometimes you're glad you missed them. That's right. I like the misconnections myself. I just don't understand why you. You get a giggle out of. I mean, I do get a giggle out of them too, but it's just they're they're just kind of silly. Cracks me up. So, it, it, here's here's some dating problems. All right. So these people have a lot of dating problems. So Clearly. I have a friend who's on a dating site. Uh huh. Um, actually, I actually met her on a dating site. That's how we became friends. Okay. We we lived too far away and we didn't get to really date. We went on like I think one day, just kind of hung out. She's a cool person. I really liked her. I'd probably gone out with her if we lived closer. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we stayed friends, and she's still dating. Okay. I'm not. I got lucky. You got married. Yeah. Heck yeah. Um, but she's still out there. I feel bad for her. She's always posting things because you know dudes, dudes on the dating site, you got to feel really bad for the women. There's some just, you, I don't know. There could be, there should be a book written about experiences on dating sites. I'm sure there sites. are. I'm <laughs> sure there are. I, half of these experiences I hear from my friends, I just can't believe that they're true. And I wouldn't if I didn't know that my friends weren't lying. Okay. It's true. Okay. So anyway, this is one of her, and she posts several of them. This is actually a, a normal one in some ways. But she had met a dude, and they were kind of back and forth in a while, you know, trading emails, and everything was kind of looking good. He mm -hmm. was, you know, seemed like a kind of a decent person. Mm -hmm. So she updated her profile photo, and she she did it on like Facebook and other things. But she did on her the same picture on her dating profile, and when she did, it revealed that she had a little bit of underarm hair. Okay. She's she she's a natural girl. Mm -hmm. It's not you know it doesn't look like Vic Tabeck. <laughs> you know she doesn't have Don King in a headlock. No. <laughs> it's just light. You know it's wispy. Mm -hmm. No big deal. Mm -hmm. So she posted this picture, and the dude says, "Is that underarm hair?" And she says, "Yeah." He blocks her. He blocked her. Stop talking to her. And blocks her on the dating site. Because she has a little bit of underarm hair. A little bit. That's what? Apparently that's too much underarm hair for what, him. What about that? What What do you think? What's going on? I don't have a problem with underarm hair. I uh, I would say I, I, I kind of prefer not. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I don't. It's not a deal breaker. It's not a deal breaker for me either. Especially if it's a if it's a person who, <clears throat> who has... Uh, either never or very rarely shaved their underarms, that hair is going to be just like any other body hair. Right. Just like the hair on your arms or on your legs. It's not It's not that big of a deal. It isn't. It's, I, it's not. I, I mean, saw the picture. First of all, I, I don't even know how he noticed. <laughs> it's, to me, it wasn't that noticeable. I don't even know I would have looked at it. And then after a while, if I saw it, it would be like, oh, oh okay, not a big deal. That's what... I mean... I think I married, I don't know for sure, I guess we never had the conversation in depth, but I would say a lot of people that I had been in, that I dated, mm -hmm. might have preferred that I didn't have a beard. 
Some women don't like facial hair. That's true. And I think some people I dated might have preferred I didn't have facial hair. Maybe I had shorter hair, mm -hmm. a little more presentable, <laughs> a little <laughs> bit like a surgeon or a banker. You look a little scruffy sometimes. Um, but you know, <laughs> I I don't know. Say I don't know that I ran across anybody who who didn't like it. But I guess they wouldn't have contacted me if they didn't. That's true. Like that, true. but and you don't always notice that with women, but still, I, how could it? Why is that such a big deal? What does so, that mean? So, I mean, uh, let me ask the men out there a question because I know what your answer is. If if you're in love with a woman, or even if you're just in lust with a woman, and or uh, anybody, um, and and they haven't shaved in a few days, their legs or any other body part that they normally shave, is that going to stop you from being intimate with them? Yeah, and what if what if you marry someone and they decide, or even let's just say for medical reasons they couldn't shave under their arms or whatever for, for a while. whatever reason, if they even had a couple super years, sensitive skin or yeah. they had an injury, yeah, they had like some kind of hormone thing that the doctor said you need to just not shave, just let that grow for a while. What do you do? Do you get a divorce? Do you just stop being do with you the just person? What not look at them anymore? Or I can't be with you. You have hair under your arms. I wonder though if that's kind of going to become the because. The the generation younger than us mm -hmm. has kind of raised with nobody here. I mean, the dudes shave their chest and backs and everything. That's true. And that's sort of becoming the norm now. I think a lot of guys, whenever you see Tom Selleck from the 70s in his little shorts and he's like, he looks like a scrub brush. He looks like he's wearing a jogging suit under his shorts you, made out of human hair. You don't see that anymore. Most guys now when they're, they're just like sleek, you know, they got if they got muscles or whatever, but they just don't have... The body hair. It's right. that that has kind of become a symbol of like the seventies, maybe the eighties, because after that people started shaving and you just don't see it as much. Even people even people that do have I mean, okay, my second husband was a very hairy man. Mm -hmm. Um his hair was blonde, but there was a lot of it. And even he would trim like all shave of his down. body hair. Yeah. He wouldn't shave completely to the skin, but he would trim it with like a, a, a electrical razor. And I, I, it, I liked his hair. But how many women are out there now just like, oh, chest hair? No, if you have chest hair, forget it. I'm blocking you. Right? You're blocked. You're blocked. Oh, you have hair on your butt? Sorry. Nope. That's a different, totally different dating site, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's, it's an experience. I just want, I, I don't know. I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine that is. A just a, I don't know that that would stop the date. For for well, for me, it's it, it a I if I were your friend, yeah, who got blocked mm -hmm. by this idiot, I would I would basically be like, hey, I dodged a bullet mm -hmm. because clearly this guy is not a body positive uh, kind of guy. He's obviously not um, open to people being who they are and liking them for who they are. Mm -hmm. If if a little tiny bit of armpit hair is going to make you freak out like that and block people and just be done with commerce, completely ghost them, that there's something wrong with him. That, yeah, that's, that's definitely yeah something really wrong with him. One of the uh, again, this is somebody I met on the dating site. And became we became friends, but I have a really good friend. She lives far away, and it's one of the reasons we didn't date all the time. Uh, we went on one date, and I knew her through um, the the dating site for a little while before I realized that she had alopecia. Mm -hmm. So she had no hair. Okay. Anywhere. She was completely bald. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think she minds me telling the story. Probably not. But so, and, and I was prepared. So it, I went on the date. And now she would sometimes wear wigs, like I think at work and things mm -hmm. like that, certain mm -hmm. social circumstances. We went on, I went on the date. I was wearing my kilt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she was wearing no hair. Okay. And so we went on this date. It was in another city. It was kind of a far drive away. And we had so much fun. And so it was so weird because someone made a comment. I think people just automatically assume that she had just had cancer treatment or something. Because but, she has no hair. Right. Like it couldn't have just been her option. No one thinks about that. And then really it's it's a disorder that I think a lot of people don't know much about. True. And they think that either she's ha she's got a sickness or she's just a weirdo that wants to shave her head. Right. And I and so I think that that's what, you know, well she's with the weirdo in the kilt, so she must be a weirdo, <laughs> a weirdo shaved weirdo her. with no hair. But she was so much fun and I I it was one of the things I just really regretted not being able to see her a lot more. And we became friends and we, you know, when if we get a chance to hang out we do, but we're good Facebook friends. But but it's but there was that time when you stop and you just think, oh, could I, could I actually 
date a woman with no hair? I've not had that experience. What is that going to be like? So, you know? you, so that thought popped into your head. And yeah. how soon after that thought was the thought, sure, why not? Well, at the beginning, from the beginning, I didn't really care. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's some like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Never had that experience before. But then with somebody that you really like and you had a good time, you, you stop and go, wow, what if this became something, you know, would I want to live my life with with a woman no, with no hair I it's, you just don't i don't think about that yeah but now you you just think oh that could be something that could be something this could be my reality but but also you think well she can have every hair because she could wear wigs and it's like then it becomes oh okay maybe this, this be would fun. be fun <laughs> yeah so <laughs> she can be anybody she wants but to it's be. weird because since that experience i've seen a lot of people and most of them haven't been my friends but you know how sometimes you'll you, you have a friend and you'll look at their friends list and see all their friends no, and I don't stalk people. I don't stalk. I just look okay. at their friends list. And I've seen like three or four people in the same position that she's in, this grown-ups, uh-huh. with no hair, and that's their life, uh-huh. living a life with no hair. And they're just, they have these, li- most of them, I guess, I don't know if they have to compensate because of that. They have to be more gregarious and more open. She's much. Uh, she's a big introvert and has so many friends, and people want to invite her to the party because she's just fun. And it just seems like a lot of people are like that. I think if it were me... I would just sit in the corner with my bald head. I would just, I would <laughs> my be bald like, oh, that's a bald weirdo <laughs> over there. But, but I think a lot of these people, uh, or maybe it's just on Facebook, it seems like a lot of people who, who have complete alopecia like that uh, are the life of the party. But just think Everybody it, wants them to be in their party. And you know, they always hear, boy, I bet you save a lot on toiletries <laughs> yes because there's no shampoo there's no conditioner there's no shaving so and no they, razors they use there's... those jokes too a lot yeah <laughs> right yeah. yeah that's now i kind of want alopecia <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but i mean um i don't know we're so conditioned it, when you think about it and i've thought about it so many times we're just primates we're just hairy monkeys we are we're, we're a version of hairy monkeys and you look at you know baboons or apes who have big red butts and have uh, beards and weird shaped hair on the top of there. We're just another one of those, mm-hmm. but we're used to it. We're 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 skinny or not skinny, but just skin hairless apes. We're not necessarily <laughs> we're hairless. hairless apes, and then the top of our head we have a growth of hair, and we make that hair into different shapes and to different colors. Yes, we and do, and it makes complete sense to us. But to aliens or to other apes or to whatever, it would probably be the weirdest thing ever. So, like, why are you changing your appearance? It I would, don't understand. It would be like in the ape world, you know, someone just like, oh, they've got hair on their knuckles. I can't go out with them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have hair on my toes. That's why we don't date anymore. <laughs> I just I want to be honest now. <laughs> Enough time has passed. What's funny, though, is if I'm going to wear open-toed shoes or sandals, I shave it. See, that's wrong. I shave my toes. That is wrong. Today on this epic disaster. <laughs> With, you're going to find out things you don't want to know. Sherry shaves her toes. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Let's uh, close this okay. podcast down quickly before we find out anything else you shave. <laughs> uh, this has been a fun show. What What do you think of the beer? We have a, a beer uh, hop. What is it? Hoppy, Hoppy Kaye. Hoppy Kaye mofo. Without the mofo. Um, what do you think? I am um, not a fan. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and it's not that it's not a good IPA. I was going to ask you, are you not a fan because it's a hoppy beer or you just don't like the beer? It's just, it's just, it's, I, I'm not a fan because it's not my style of beer. Right. But as far as IPAs go, it's, it's pleasant. I didn't like it at all at first. I mean, like the first five, six sips, you saw me over here. I'm making face. I couldn't handle it. It's so bitter, so much bitter, and it wasn't and and that citrusy bitter. I just wasn't for me. Now, as the show has gone on, I would I've drank a little more, but even though that's happened, I still it's not my favorite. Right. Even at a two. Even a two. Yeah. 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 I'm probably gonna do the same. And, and a two. Here's one thing I'll say about the beer as a beer. Now. I'm trying not to do it just because it's a hoppy beer because that's not my personal favorite. Maybe people would like it because it's a bitter beer. But what I find is, and maybe you got the same experience, I don't know, I drink it, there is a plastic aftertaste. Like after I drink it and then I kind of exhale, there's like that new car taste. <laughs> Wait, what? 
It's a new car smell that's coming out. You have a out. new car taste, which means you go around licking, <laughs> licking cars. Licking new cars. I do, but hmm. I mean, okay. do you get that kind of, that after kind of plasticky? I do. Now that you mention it, it does something to the taste of my tongue. Yeah, it's, kind of, it's just on the exhale. I don't yeah. know that you're supposed to have a beer that tastes like plastic. <laughs> um, please, don't take our word for it. We're very strange people. <laughs> this could be the best beer in the world. It may have won lots and lots of awards, um, and and that's great. I'm sure they make a lot of great beers. This uh, It's just not our. It's not for me. We're not a hops people, We're which is a shame because we got several hop, more hops beer downstairs. And so. yeah, because Rick just keeps buying them. No, I feel like we have to sometimes do a hop beer. Which means I'm going to start buying all of the super, super fruity beers. Okay, you can do that. And some more of the peanut butter beers. I will be out of town <laughs> next week. I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be doing stuff somewhere else. Working. And uh, so I'm going to be putting up the podcast before I go. And then we will do the show next Monday, mm -hmm. and then it will come out next Tuesday. So it'll be a day late. Next week. Got to hang on. We'll figure out some kind of reward. Also, we need to do some live stuff. We need to do a live show. Okay. I don't think we could do it next week, but we need to do it soon. Let's do it soon. Do a live show. And Halloween, let's think of what we can do on Halloween. I what, think... What I'd like to do, and I'd like to put this out there for our listeners, what do you want us, what do you want us to do on our live show? Um, it'll be video, obviously. So what do you want to see other than boobs? <laughs> <laughs> well, that kills it. <laughs> I can see my boobs. No one wants to see my boobs. I, I do. Ask and I ask. I love to see your boobs. <laughs> no one wants to see it. You have very nice boobs. No, I don't think so. Um, well, we do have very nice T-shirts. We do. Well, those T-shirts are. You can find them on our website. I I t posted a picture of myself wearing them. I'm tired of being the only one wearing them. Well, I you're not. Other people should buy them and wear them around. They look really cool. Here's what I just found out. This sh this shirt was designed by Jay Hilgenfeld. Yes. A great illustrator, cartoonist, artist who's done some stuff for us, and I love his work, which is why I asked him to do the shirt. Mm -hmm. We we did the shirt. It's out there. I just saw, saw a shirt from uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000, uh -huh. their new shirt. It looks so much like this. It's like they copied our design. I, I, you think they copied us? I'm, no, I'm not saying. I'm just saying it's like they did. But it's the same kind of thing. It's almost the same shape, but cartoon and all that kind of stuff. Interesting. It looks so, I mean... It's obviously a cool design because people are trying to be like that. Yeah, I people want to be like us. I, I know. So get that shirt. I, I would, it's not that expensive. It really isn't. Uh, one of our listeners, the stalker, actually mm -hmm. bought herself a hoodie. I know. And she likes it's it. It's almost hoodie season. It is. You got to do that. We might even give one away. Let's do that. I have an idea, but I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to go into detail. But we might have a chance to give one away. But one thing we will give away, stickers. All day. As many stickers. No, I won't say as many as you want. But just send us your uh, your mailing address and we will send you stickers as always. That's yeah. that's always a thing. That's all you got to do. You don't even have to pay for it. And then get involved with us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, all of that kind of stuff. And send us email at uh, thisepicdisaster at gmail.com. Tell us you listen. We like to hear. We Just do. say hi to us. We, we want to know. Rate us. You... Rate us wherever you download us. So give me a nickname. We'll give you a nickname. We'll give you a nickname. <laughs> um, but also uh, uh, keep 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 an eye out for for uh, possibly getting a free T-shirt or some other merchandise because sure. it's not just shirts. Nope. We got mugs and stuff. We'll do a lot of fun stuff as the fall comes up because we both love fall and we'll be giving away a lot of stuff and just having a good time. Um, but we always appreciate you downloading and subscribing to the podcast and being our friend. And listening, because that's why we do this. It's the only reason we do. No well, one pays us. No one pays us. All right. I we'll get be paid in beer. Next Tuesday. Okay. Come hear the show again. See and we'll you see you at that point. Bye. Bye. This is a Violet Jester Media Podcast.